Hello guys, welcome to the clinical scenarios and this is your case number 24. Now this is a very small boy, 5 year boy who is brought to the emergency department with the blurring of the vision, there is a pain in the right eye as well as headache. His past medical history, now this is very very significant, we have otitis media, dental caries, eczema and allergic rhinitis. So this patient has an allergic history and he is also allergic to the insect venom. His temperature is 39.4, so he is febrile. BP is somewhat low, we have 100 by 70. Then we have the pulse which is high, this is 120 per minute. Respiration 20 per minute. Now lot of findings on examination. We have conjunctival injection, pain with extra ocular movements, Periorbital edema, limited adduction and also there is proptosis of the right eye. So they are telling you proptosis of one eye that is right eye while left eye is normal. Which of the following is the most common predisposing factor for the child's condition? Now your options are bacterial sinusitis, Decryocystitis, dental abscess, and the hordeolum. Now, I will tell you a very, very easy way of approaching this complex question with lot of risk factors, lot of past history, lot of examination. So, there is always something which I always say in the classes also that you should know the catch point. Out of 100 informations, you should know which one is the most important information which you have to pick and based on that you will be getting the answer. So, this is actually the skill that you do uh, get after solving so many questions as well as practicing those questions. So, here the clue point is that this 5 year child has the unilateral proptosis and we are saying that the left eye is normal. Now what do you know about this? If I talk about the proptosis in children. What are the causes of proptosis in children? Because you know proptosis is an important topic so you can approach the question from proptosis now. So the most common cause of proptosis in children, if it is unilateral then it is orbital cellulitis, orbital cellulitis while if we are talking about bilateral proptosis then it is metastasis metastasis now this metastasis is most commonly from aml that is your chloroma chloroma that is acute myeloid leukemia and it can also be the neuroblastoma it can be neuroblastoma so now, because here we have a case where proptosis is unilateral, you get a clue that this must be a case of orbital cellulitis. Now look at the symptoms here. We are having the conjunctival injection, pain with the extracular movements, we have periobital edema, limited adduction as well as proptosis. So, can we get all these things with orbital cellulitis? Yes, orbital cellulitis. See, there are two things. One is preceptal cellulitis and one is your orbital cellulitis. Preceptal means it is posteriorly, posterior to the septum. So, once it is just limited anterior to the septum, then it is called as preceptal cellulitis. In that case, you will not get all these things. But if this inflammation is going beyond the septum, then you are reaching near the orbital space, okay, the orbital space and in this orbital space, 
we can have the involvement of the extraocular muscles because all the extraocular muscles especially the rectus muscles are in uh, originating from the annulus of zin and they are inserting into the sclera so i can have the involvement of the extraocular muscles and their nerve supply can also be affected and you know that all are supplied by the third cranial nerve except the so4 and the lr6 right they are saying that there is a problem in adduction adduction means medial rectus and medial rectus means the third nerve so there is an involvement of the muscle we uh, do have the proptosis because there is so much of inflammatory infiltration we have edema so eyeball will be propped out and we will have the periorbital edema now this is a very very you know um, characteristic feature of the orbital cellulitis it's a inflammatory condition we have lot of inflammatory infiltration so eyeball will be uh, propping out there will be optic disc changes back pressure changes there will be swelling of the optic disc there will be uh, chemosis there can be you know conjunctival congestion what is chemosis chemosis is the edema of the conjunctiva so all these things can be found in orbital cellulitis that can cause the unilateral proptosis now do we have the risk factors here they are saying that already we have so many risk factors otitis media dental caries eczema and allergic rhinitis he is even allergic to insect veno so all these are actually the risk factors so there are so many risk factors which are present in this boy 5 years boy and he is also showing you the systemic features he is having fever he is having uh, hypotension uh, like uh, the pulse is also high so all these things are also confirming that there is a inflammation as well as infection so if you look at the options here they are saying that which of the following is the most common predisposing factor so all the four are actually the predisposing factors of this orbital cellulitis be it the bacterial sinusitis the cryocystitis the dental abscess and hodulums so if i have the infection in the surrounding area then definitely it can enter the orbital space but which is most common the question is most common so answer to this question is the most common is the bacterial sinusitis it is the bacterial sinusitis which is the most common predisposing factor to the orbital cellulitis and per se which sinusitis it is actually the ethmoidal sinusitis it is the ethmoidal sinusitis which is the most common sinusitis which can lead to orbital cellulitis why actually infection is very common from sinusitis because all these sinuses are in periphery of the orbital space so be it the maxillary sinus ethmoidal sinus the frontal sinus so whenever we have infection and inflammation in these sinuses it can definitely uh, go to the uh, orbital septum and even beyond want it causing the orbital cellulitis and you know there is a important dd now if they ask you what could be the dds in this boy so there are certain things which you can think of one is of course your orbital cellulitis which is the first thing that you are going to think based on the presentation unilateral proptosis and also the risk factors then it can also progress to cavernous sinus thrombosis so i can also think about the cavernous sinus thrombosis then i can also think about you know non specific inflammatory syndromes it can be non specific inflammatory syndromes where they are characterized by the uh, inflammatory signs but actually there may be something else there so these three things you have to um, 
you know, uh, differentiate also. Now, if you are actually uh, considering the same scenario in adults, then in adults, I will say that you can also think about the keratico-cavernous fistula. That can also lead to the same things or we can also think about the pseudotumors. Even pseudotumors could be there. All these are causing the proptosis. And when it comes to adults, always remember you have to think about the thyroid eye disease the thyroid eye disease then um, there is a thing called as the tolosa hunt syndrome tolosa hunt syndrome so all these things also you have to take in care of when we are solving the question related to proptosis now out of this which one to consider which one not to consider depends upon the age of the patient the gender of the patient the risk factors the past history as well as the examination of the patient so i thought uh, i think uh, it is very very clear now why we are going with the bacterial sinusitis and how we can actually approach the question with respect to the risk factors dds also you will uh, be in knowing that what are the things that you have to work upon because you have to keep something in mind then only you will be start approaching the case on those lines so i hope now this is very very clear in case of any doubt you people can always ping me up on any of the social media platforms you can visit the facebook page and the facebook uh, group also and you can also follow me on the instagram and do take part on the daily uh, quiz that take place on telegram group and channel so that you can have a good discussion of ophthalmology. Thank you and happy ophthalmology.